Hi guys, uh, recently I received a question about doing a callout in DaVinci Resolve. So um, today I'm going to have a quick look at one way of doing it and maybe you can also track it to an object or a point in your scene as well. And uh, so yeah, let's get started. But first off, it's raining outside so the sound might be a bit bad. So apologies in advance. But um, yeah, let's, let's have a look. So right now we're in the edit part of the DaVinci Resolve and let's say we want to tr uh, track a callout to follow this little girl as she walks across the field. So we're going to move our playhead over the clip and then click on the Fusion tab to enter the Fusion part of DaVinci Resolve. Now if you don't want to track your callout, you just want a stationary callout, you can skip this first step but I thought I might as well show it anyway so in case someone want to you know, make that callout follow an object or a point or something like that. So the first thing we have to do is going to track the, the little girl right here. So we're going to click on the window down here and press Shift Spacebar and search for Tracker. And we're just going to use a simple tracker for this one. So click on the tracker and press add. And we're going to move the tracker in between the input and the output. So we're going to press shift and then left click and then move the tracker in between the lines and then let go. And there, the tracker is now in between the input and the output. So now we're going to click on the tracker node and then we're going to select an area where DaVinci Resolve will use to track. And obviously we can just use this uh, sunglasses area. There's lots of detail and lots of contrast between the bright sunglasses and her black hair so it's going to be pretty easy for DaVinci Resolve to track. And we're going to move our playhead to the first frame and then uh, we're going to click in the inspector tab. We can click to close and open it. In the inspector tab we're going to click on this button here to start the track. And as you can see DaVinci Resolve is tracking that sunglasses part and it's doing a really good job and it's very fast and it's finished already. Maybe we'll move our playhead around just a bit just to check if our track is sticking to the area we want. And as you can see, it's always on the sunglasses, so it's pretty much a good track. So once we finish tracking, we're going to click on the, the node, the tracker node, and then go to the second uh, tab. And for the operation from none, we're going to change to match move. Basically, match move is going to make it so that anything we input into the tracker node is going to follow the movement of this track point right here. So we're going to select the match move. And for example, right now, if I, uh, let's say, add a text, so shift space and then search text and use the text plus node, add. And if I input a text plus into the tracker node, and let's say type maybe like girl or something, and now we play the clip. As you can see, the girl, the girl uh, from the text is following the uh, tracking point on the uh, the sunglasses right now. It's following the movement and the location. So, and also we can just move the uh, our text anywhere we want, and it's still going to follow the movement of the tracking point right here. So now that we have our tracker, we can uh, start to make our call out. So let's let's start with the the line that's going to run out or shoot out of the uh, the area that we want. So for the line, we can use several tools, but uh, I'm going to use the paint tool. So I'm going to click on the window here, press shift space, and then search for paint. And then for the paint tool, we need a background to paint on. So we're going to again shift space and do background. Now, the first time I did it, it might seem a bit weird, but instead of using the paint, inputting it into the background, we're going to input the background into the paint. It's just, just the way it works, I suppose. So right now, if I click on the paint node and press 1 to open it up in this, uh, this screen here, and I click on the spline tool, and then I draw like a, a line, like a call out coming out. And now we can see that there's a, a white line coming out. And obviously, if we click on the paint tool, we can change the color to whatever you want, but I, I'm just going to stick with white for, for this example. Now, if we go to the brush control, again in the inspector tab, we can change the size and we can change the softness of the edges. So I'm going to just reduce softness. I just want like a nice sharp line. And for the size, maybe just a nice little thin line, maybe. Ah, maybe I'll just leave it here. We, you can always change it later if you want. Now, one thing though is right now if we input our paint into the tracker. As you can see, this, this picture here is just going to go over our video, which is not what we want. What we want is just to leave the white line, but have a transparent background. So we're going to click on the background. And again, in the inspector tab, we're going to reduce the alpha to zero. Now, if you happen to have like a yellow, red or green or blue background, you're just going to turn every single channel down to zero. So red, green, blue, and alpha, just turn it all down to zero, and you're going to have a transparent background. So you just have like a white line. 
So now we're going to change the uh, shape of our call out a bit. Maybe we want it to like run out this direction and then end up around here somewhere. So we're going to click on the paint uh, node and using the arrow tool, we're going to highlight our, our line and then move maybe the starting point to just above the little girl, the midpoint maybe around here somewhere and the end point maybe like uh, here somewhere. So this is just a, just an example. Obviously, if you guys do it, I'm sure you're much more artistic than me and you'll get a much more beautiful uh, composition. <laughs> so um, now that we have the line, the problem again is if you play it, okay, the line's following the little girl as you can see, but obviously we want to just do a keyframe. So the line kind of at first is not there and then it kind of like writes out, you know, it slowly runs out, shoots out like this. So we're going to move the playhead to like, let's say frame 290 or the first frame that we want the line to start to write onto the, the clip. And then on the inspector tab, if we click on the paint tool or the paint node and go to the stroke control and then we go down at the bottom around here somewhere, you can see the, the write on option. Now what, what happens is you can choose where the line begins and where the line ends. So as you can see now, we can kind of keyframe it so it runs or it writes out already. So in the first frame, I'm going to have it so that the write on is from zero to zero. So basically it hasn't started to draw the line yet. And I'm going to click this uh, kind of square icon here to start a keyframe. And then maybe I'll come, I'm going to move the playhead about 10 frames. So to frame 300. And then in this frame, I'm going to change the write on from 0 to 0 to 0 to 1. So the write on is basically complete. Now the DaVinci Resolve has automatically created another keyframe. So if we look on our playhead uh, or on our timeline, you can see two right white lines. So this is the first keyframe and that's the second keyframe. So we play it. As you can see, the, the line is writing out from the first keyframe to the second keyframe. There you go. And now basically we have our line that's shooting out of where we want. The next step is obviously we can just input a text and it's going to be pretty easy as well. So for the text, I'm just going to use the text plus node again. So I'll click down here and then press shift space and then type text and add a text plus node, add it in. And obviously we want to uh, merge these two components. So we have our line right here and we have our text. So we want to merge them together before they go into a tracker. So we, what we need is a, a merge node. So just search uh, M-E-R-G-E, -E, if I can spell it correctly. And uh, with the merge node, we're just going to place it just before the tracker. There you go. And then we're going to input our text into the merge node. So as you can see right now, we have our line component going into the merge and then our text component also going to the merge. And then both of them are just going into the tracker. So right now, if I type something in the text node, let's say uh, girl, and maybe change the font a bit. There you go. Now, as you can see, both the line and the text are going to the merge and going into the tracker. So both of them are following the movement of the, the girl or the sunglasses, basically. And we can just move our text maybe around here somewhere or wherever you think looks nice. And now we have our call out. There you go. And obviously what we need to do now is also keyframe our text as well. So it doesn't just stick the whole stick there the whole time. So let's say we want uh, like our line to shoot out first. So once our line finished writing, then we want our text to write on to the clip. So maybe I'll move uh, the playhead to this frame. You can use your arrow key, the left and right arrow key to move backwards and forwards in your timeline. So in this frame, I'm going to keyframe it so the text hasn't appeared yet. So I'm going to click on the text node and in the inspector tab, go down uh, at the bottom somewhere. There should be a right on effect. There you go. So here again, just like the line, we can select the start and the end point. So if we keyframe it at both zero to zero, our text is not going to appear yet. So I'm going to click on the keyframe here and then maybe move the playhead like seven frames or something, maybe eight frames. And then here, I'm going to create another keyframe. So I'm going to move the end point of the write on from zero to one. So now the text has finished writing on. So now if you play it, okay, our line finish running and then the text appear. So let's play it slowly. So first our line kind of shoots out following the keyframe. Then it arrives at the keyframe that we just done for the text and the text starts to write on. So now basically we have our call out. 
another component we might want to add to our callout is like maybe like a little circle at the beginning to mark the beginning point of the uh, our callout graphic. So to create the circle, there are, again there are several ways to do it, but maybe I'm just going to use the paint tool again since we are familiar with it now. So I'm just going to click on the window here, press shift space, and then again use the paint node. And obviously for the paint node, we will need a background node as well. And the same as before, I'm going to connect the background into the paint node and I'm going to click on this paint node and press 1 to uh, output it onto this monitor right here. Now for this one obviously we want like a circular shape so what we're going to do is we're going to instead of using the spline tool we're going to use the circle tool so we're going to click the circle tool and then draw like a little circle maybe this size and again we want our background to be transparent so we're going to click on our background node and turn down our alpha the blue channel green channel and red channel so we just have a dot on the back on a transparent background and again we have to merge this circle with the rest of the components so i'm going to merge it with the line and also the text now since the merge node kind of it only has like two inputs so to merge this into the rest of the uh, the line and the text we're going to need another merge node so i'm going to search merge again there you go and i'm going to put the merge node just before the tracker here and now i'm going to put the paint the second paint tool which is our circle into the second merge so now the circular uh, dot here has appeared in our video so basically what's what's happening is the the line this component here and the text are merging together and then once they're merged they're going to run into the second merge to merge with the the little dot again and then all of them is going to run into the tracker so now if i play the the clip everything is pretty much following the movement of of the little girl so again we're going to just move our dot so, so i'm going to click on the paint node here use the arrow key arrow tool and then move the dot maybe around here somewhere to its correct place now if we play it there you go maybe move it down a little bit um, but i'm sure you you get the idea you know <laughs> if you do it i'm sure you're going to be much more meticulous and you get a much more beautiful result but uh, again so now we just have to keyframe the circular uh, dot thing so that at the beginning it's not appearing yet and then it kind of expands out and then the line runs out and then the text writes on so i'm going to move the playhead to like uh, a frame before the line appears maybe around here and i'm going to move it back another three frames maybe one two three and then if i click on the paint node and again go to the inspector since we use the circular tool to create our dot we will have like a radius option so we can like increase the size or decrease the size of our, our dot here so maybe for the first frame right here again i'm going to reduce the radius all the way to zero and then create a keyframe and then move the playhead forward maybe just before the line appears and then increase the radius to the size we want maybe about 0 0.005 uh, maybe a bit too small maybe 0 0.01 there you go so you can see it clearly obviously if i do it for real maybe i'll have it just a bit smaller but so right now if you play it there you go you can see the circle kind of expands then the line writes on then the the text writes on okay so for the final touches that we can add to make our call out a bit more organic or some would say more beautiful but it's all subjective really is we can vary the speed of the right on of the line if if you want or the text as well and the circle is if you, right now if you look at it the line kind of writes on at a constant speed so it just draws at one speed so sometimes some people like to kind of ease out and ease in so the the line will kind of write on slowly then gets faster 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 then as it gets towards the end it kind of slows down a bit again so what we can do is we can click on the spline tool right here and click it and open this window and obviously the the line is basically the paint one node is the first paint node so we're going to click the paint one node and then we're going to click on this tool here uh, zoom to fit and click on it and now we can see the complete uh, keyframe that's for the uh, the paint to one or the for the, the line so here at the beginning you can see the line is kind of hasn't right on yet and it slowly writes on, writes on, writes on, writes on until it's complete. And as you can see, the line is completely straight, so the speed is constant. So what we can do is we can uh, click and drag and highlight both uh, both points, 
and then we can uh, move these handles around to create different shapes for the graph so we maybe we can uh, draw it out so it's like this shape and this shape something like this so as you can see that the right on kind of begins slow and then gets faster 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 and then starts to decelerate again as it is come is coming to an end so now if we uh, watch the right on again maybe just have it render a bit ah, you can see now the speed is not not constant anymore it starts slow and speed up and then slow down again so just a small little touch to make the uh, the right on a bit just a bit more organic and more fluid um, but, uh, but obviously again as I said it's all subjective so it's up to you really and you can do the same for the uh, the text right on and the expansion of the circle as well you just have to uh, choose the the keyframe of the node you want so let's say for the text if we click on a text and click zoom to fit you can see that right now the text is writing on at a constant pace so if you want to kind of ease it in ease it out you can highlight these uh, kind of uh, dot and just move it around to draw a different shape for the, the right on the speed of the right on well that's pretty much it I hope it answers your questions um, if you have any more please feel free to leave them in the comments I'll try my best to answer them if I know the answers and uh, I'll, I'll see you around I guess bye